See, there was a statistical techniques research group established by Sam Wilkes shortly after the war. It's just when the statistical statistics research group gets these funds to bring George back that the, really it becomes a big establishment and I get a chance to hire on as a research associate and all uh -huh. that sort of thing. Uh -huh. It was sort of, it was one of, the, one of the things that Sam Wilkes was doing on the side and he was the early um, Princeton conferences, as a matter of fact, started way back then, you mm -hmm. know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, um, but anyway, the, um, yeah, well, George gets a chance to um, Churchill Eisenhart. For, I don't know why Churchill Eisenhart, but anyway, Churchill Eisenhart plays a role in getting George to think seriously about establishing a Department of Statistics at the University of Wisconsin. Okay, now Churchill Eisenhardt is at the National Bureau of Standards, Standards now, yeah. now NIST. Yes, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Okay. His dad, yes. his father was a, a, a dean, a dean, of, a dean of the graduate school at Princeton for a while. Oh, Princeton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know where, I think Churchill must have, must have been at Wisconsin or, or something. I've, oh, uh, anyway. yeah, I don't know. So George goes out there and contemplates it and decides he'd try it out. So, and when he went, I went with him out there and there was no statistics department. I went there with George, all there was what called the Mathematics Research Center. The Army had a Mathematics Research Center. Mm -hmm. And so we went out there and I spent a year with George at the Mathematics Research Center. And then I got this invitation to come back to um, Princeton to uh, be an associate professor in the engineering school. That's because when I was, in the previous years at the SDRG, I started teaching courses with uh, Jack Whitwell, a professor of chemical engineering over there, had a real interest in statistics. So I would go over and I started teaching statistics. And George would come over as well. Oh. So George and I were giving lectures on statistics, the design of experiments. And I was giving a regular, ended up pretty much giving a regular course rather regularly in the chemical engineering department. And, um, the, um, so when I left the Princeton, why they had, they felt they had a real need to continue this statistics program in the engineering school. So they asked me if I'd come back. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I'd been with, I'd been with George all these years and so on. And, and, um, I felt, well, I, you know, I love the guy and all that sort of thing, but I, you know, who, who in hell am I? And uh, I, I don't know me yet. And so I thought <laughs> it'd be good to, um, so I actually made the break, and uh, as, as um, Jack would say, you have to make up your mind, right? Indeed. And difficult so I, separation. Difficult though. separation, mm -hmm. but we went back to, uh, so I, I became in, a member of the faculty of um, the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences at Princeton. Uh -huh. The very year the statistics department was established at, in, uh, in uh, Wisconsin. So I see. So I didn't, I didn't, I only stayed a year in Wisconsin uh -huh. with George uh -huh. at that time. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now in the, in, in, so you remained in that engineering department for, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. for well, the rest of your rest academic, of my academic career. career. Right? Yeah. Okay. And, um, now in, in addition to your, your work on the campus there, you did a good deal of outreach oh, yeah. work oh, yeah. still oh, yeah. in, so, in the yeah. vein of the earlier thrust when you were at cyanamid well, in terms of, that, of... Yeah, that was an explosive period, uh -huh. goodness sakes, yeah. Now the, I had, I had, I don't want to overdo this, but I had lots and lots of opportunities to give lectures on design of experiments and on statistics and so forth. Uh, and and uh, so I didn't invite to do here and there in the next place and give short courses. The, um, yeah, we should go back and talk about um, the Gordon conferences and technometrics. Uh, as as that, now the that, early, the Gordon conferences then wove into the Gordon conferences started way way back during well the Gordon conferences were in existence when did I go to my first Gordon conference I guess 1953 1952 1952 something yeah. like that no, no, no this is appropriate because the Gordon conferences are specifically for statistics in, in chemistry, chemistry and, and chemical, chemical engineering, engineering right which it's is right up your alley. Yes, so. and of course, you must remember the Gordon Conferences are myriad Gordon <laughs> Conferences every year. They're announced in science mm -hmm. and, uh, and several hundred a year. They're wonderful conferences. They last a week. For those folks that don't know about them, they last a week. 
or the last five days. And on each day, each morning, there's a principal paper. Someone gives a paper and he takes his time giving the paper. It might take an hour, an hour and a half to give the paper. And then there's the discussion. Right? And then everyone breaks for lunch. And the afternoons are free. So, you know, some people play golf, some people go swimming, some people sit around and chat. I've got a Wilcoxon story there. Oh, okay. there we go. And then the and the um and um and then in the evening you have a deal, uh, evening meal, and then after the dinner meeting you go into a, a second session, a major paper. The guy exposits whatever he's talking about, takes his time, have an hour, an hour and a half discussion following it, and then after that everyone goes and has a little beer. Uh -huh. and so we all retire around eleven or twelve o'clock and get up the next morning. <laughs> Two papers a day, uh -huh. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday night is the, uh, we have the, always have a party, a big party on Thursday night after the peak. And then uh, Friday morning, you have one paper and then you go home. So the very few papers and uh, all this discussion. And you, you get lots of discussion. I mean, people like Kempthorne in the audience and so forth. You're bound to have a little bit of tense. And, and so. <laughs> a little back and, the, and forth. Um, so, you know, <laughs> but you meet everybody. <clears throat> Oh, those are absolutely wonderful conferences. And, of course, these are centered around applied problems, yeah, aren't they? Problems. And the yeah. development of the theory to, to bolster them. You know, I came prepared for this. I've got a list of people. Have I got that list here? I hope so. Of who, no, I didn't bring the list on the Gordon. No, too bad. I had a list of the uh, who the Gordon Conference chairs were. Oh, what a bunch of one applied, one... One applied statistician after the other, and all famous in that sense of we were all notorious or whatever word, <laughs> well known in those days. Well, now you mentioned Kemp Thorne, and, and yeah, you, Kemp, you also yeah. mentioned Wilcoxon oh, yeah. having been there. And oh, you said the you thing had about, a story? Oh, yeah, the thing uh -huh. about Frank Wilcoxon was <laughs> they, um, we were always meeting at New Hampton School, and apparently they had dug a water line someplace. Across the camp, across the front of the campus. Now you couldn't tell where that water line was. Was or they were planning to replace a water line or something like that. And Frank said, "Well, I can find that." Let me see. He, he could douse it. No, he act. This scout's honor. There's old Frank Wilcoxon pressing these two branches together, right? Like that with the branch <laughs> thing out like Walking across the campus and. By God, the thing, and he he claimed he could find where that pond from was with a divining rod. With a, well, with uh. with a dowser, is it? Uh huh. And you have to get a a a, a, a Y and and you you press the two branches <laughs> together, and if you've got the proper spirit and mental attitude and so forth, that thing will bend down when it crosses water. <laughs> and there's old Frank Wilcoxon walking back and forth across uh -huh. the campus. Dowsing the location of the <laughs> not a great story. Was it ever confirmed? Was he right? Well, Did we never know? really checked on that. <laughs> <laughs> but he was dead serious. <laughs> <laughs> Might be better after the party <laughs> on, on Thursday night. <laughs> oh yeah. Who were who were some of the other people who attended those early Gordon research conferences? Oh, Do you remember? Oh, scores, <laughs> scores of people. <clears throat> Goodness <clears throat> sakes. <laughs> Uh, also, the what interesting people yeah. was uh, uh, Cuthbert Daniel. Oh, Cuthbert! Of course, Cuthbert was yeah. there. Yeah, Cuthbert was one of the early chairs. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good old Cuthbert Daniel. There's a character for you. I met I first got, met Cuthbert Daniel as a graduate student down in Raleigh. He would come down and give lectures. He he did his stuff on um, normal plotting and so forth. Mm -hmm. and that sort of business <clears throat> down the first exp first ex exposition of that way of analyzing factorial designs. And uh, he was always interested in factorials and fractional factorials. He's a you know, real character, that man. Yeah. Uh huh. What, what through, about what, Henry Chaffe used oh, to attend Henry, those? Oh, Henry, the chef. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> he was another. Henry was, I think, a chair of one of the. the um, no, he came and joined us at the Statistical Techniques Research Group, and he was working on his um, analysis of variance textbook. Analysis of variance text. Just finishing that up. And so he came to the STRG as a visiting professor for, a, and actually he spent, I think, two or three years there. And um, he was the one, we, you know, he'd, I'd be in my office, whatever the hell I was doing, and Henry the chef would come in, he'd come in and take, take the pencil right out of your hand and say, come on, come on, it's time to go swimming. <laughs> and so we'd go down and swim in the pool. And so that was uh -huh. back in the days when Princeton was not co-ed. 
But anyway, <laughs> but anyway so the, um, yeah, he was a really a wonderful person. And um, in the in design of experiments arena, he's he's known for mixture designs. Yes. He, right? And he yes, wrote, indeed. and he had this paper written on mixture designs. And um, I was we, Tectometrics was coming together just about that point in time, and he gave me this paper. And uh, in his handwriting and on uh, mixture designs and so forth. And, and I, I couldn't use it, so he submitted it to Applied Statistics and uh, the JRSS version. And um, they, print, they published it there. The, uh, but l uh, later on, John Cornell was down at um, Florida State. And, of course, John Cornell wrote up a series of papers on experimental design with respect to mixture design. John's famous for that. And John, when I, John was at the University of Florida. Uh, University right, of Florida, right. excuse yeah. me. He'll tell you about the yeah, Gators. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, and when we, were, when we moved to the retirement community, I had to break up my library and so forth, and I ran onto this handwritten manuscript of Henry Chaffee's, and there it is, the title and all the, and the first, first, all it is written, all written out by hand. Oh, yes. And, 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 so I sent that to John Cornell, and he couldn't have been happier. <laughs> yeah, 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 that was yeah. The, uh, yeah, John Cornell's another one of these characters who show up. The you know, anybody who is doing work in experimental design, either in the pharmaceutical arena or in the engineering area and automobile manufacturing, you name it. Those guys went to the Gordon conferences. By golly, and we yes. all got together. We got to know one another very well. Yeah.